As you can see, Cubasis uses a similar visual approach to Cubase on the desktop. It's a more stripped down application, but it's one that has many of the core features of Cubase on the desktop, which have been shrunk down and modified to fit into the iPad form, and they do so really, really well. You'll recognize the graphical look of things, and you'll see that it's kind of a simplified version of the full version of Cubase. Along the top here, we have a toolbar and a transport panel. The panel along the top provides access to the three main sections of Cubasis, the media, pads, and the mixer. And then you get a transport panel here, which you'll recognize, tempo and time signature controls, and a setup menu on the right-hand side here. Underneath that is a toolbar, and these are tools that you'll recognize from your DAW or from the desktop version of Cubase. Things like select, split, erase, draw, undo, redo, and then you get MIDI tools on the right here, transpose and quantize, as well as some audio stretching tools. The main part of the window is made up of the project area, which again will probably be familiar to you. Your tracks which you build up appear in a list here, and you can see that for every track we have familiar controls like mute and solo, track freeze, and record arm. Underneath this track list is a little section here that allows you to add or remove audio or MIDI tracks. Unlike the full version of Cubase on the desktop, you don't get loads of different track types. You just get audio and MIDI tracks, but they're all you really need here. On the left-hand side is an inspector. And here you can see that by tapping on any of these sections, I can open this little subsection for each part. So I can look at my send effects, my automation editor, my channel strip, and so forth. If I just return to the top left, I can then jump to the three other sections of Cubasis. The media section here is where I load and manage things like my audio loops, my MIDI loops, the various instruments that come bundled with Cubasis and the ones I have installed on my system, third party ones. I can manage all my different projects and project snapshots. I can create mix downs and export content from Cubasis. And I can also see what's in the trash of the application, things I've thrown away from other projects. If I click on the pads section, I get a couple of options here. The first one is a familiar piano keyboard, which I can trigger just by tapping with my finger or by connecting a MIDI keyboard or other MIDI device via the lightning connection on my iPad. I can move up and down the scales by dragging this area here. And I can also trigger chords by pressing any one of these 10 chord slots. If I want to edit any of these chords, I can simply press the E for edit button, and then I can change the notes which are part of that chord. And I can do that for any of these slots. I also have a pitch bend wheel here on the left and a sustain button which doubles up for the sustain pedal. So if I hold the sustain button and if I let it go, away go my notes. The pad section works in a similar way. You can see here we get actually uh, little representations of which chords are assigned to which pad. And I can also edit these in the same way by pressing the edit button and I get a slightly more complex chord assignment window here so I can choose all the different kinds of octaves, inversions and scales, which is quite nice. So you can use these tools to play more complex parts than you might be able to do using just your fingers or indeed using a MIDI keyboard if you're not necessarily uh, the world's most confident player yet. Last but not least is the mixer. And this looks similar to the mixer you might be familiar with from other software. And this is of course all touch sensitive as well. So I can use my finger to change levels across the app. And of course, as I get more tracks in my project, I will be able to mix them all here. So that's just a very quick tour around the interface. Let's have a look now at setting up a project.